What's up again, everybody? Today I want to show you a deck that I put together after playing a really fun classic constructed game with Arsenal Pass and uh, Channel Fireball producer, content creator extraordinaire, Brendan Patrick. You should, by the way, go check him out. He makes stuff here on Channel Fireball. He also makes stuff over on Arsenal Pass. We played a game on my channel and it was classic constructed. And I got to play Prism and I just absolutely fell in love with playing Prism. She is so much fun and the deck that I played was an absolute blast to play. So I took some of those ideas and I kind of leaned in heavy on uh, creating some of the amazing Spectral Shield tokens. And that's the deck I want to show you today is sort of like a Spectral Shield focused deck. So I'm going to walk you through this. This is a Blitz deck and I'm going to kind of blast through as I bump the microphone. I'm going to blast through the equipment and through uh, the weapon really fast because I want to get to the meat of the deck and then kind of how you would go about playing this if you want to try this for yourself. So in order to do this correctly, you're going to need Luminaris. Luminaris is the majestic light um, illusionist weapon. It is a two handed weapon and it says during your action phase, illusionist auras you control are weapons with one attack and an ability that says once per turn action, pay zero and attack. Now it does not have go again. So what this is essentially doing is it's turning in any of these spectral shield tokens. It's turning them into one attack weapons that uh, can be attacked with for free, uh, but don't have go again, unless you meet the second requirement on Luminaris, which says while there is a card with a yellow color strip in your pitch zone, illusionist attacks you control have go again. And that includes both these spectral shield tokens and traditional big attacks that illusionist likes to play. So in other words, this weapon is totally broken. Does it make sense? It's totally ridiculously busted. It gives any of your big attacks go again. It gives your spectral shields go again. Um, as long as you've met the requirement of pitching a yellow card or a two resource card, if you've done that, then everything that you have has go again, which is super gross, super cool. Also of note, this says illusionist auras, and that includes cards that you could play from hand. It doesn't just mean spectral shields, which are auras. It also means cards that I'm going to show you later. So anything that's an aura, because this is out, will become a weapon with one attack. Um, so that is the weapon that we're going to use. We are not going to use Iris of Reality, even though I think it's really cool and I have a deck built for that one as well. Um, let's talk through the equipment now. We have uh, Halo of Illumination. This is a possible run if you just want to put something into your soul. Um, in fact, I don't run that. I run the Arcanite Skullcap simply for the ability to block one or two if you're on less life. It's just for blocking ability. Um, you don't really use the Arcane Barrier. And in fact, uh, you don't really care that much at all about Arcane Barrier. As far as gloves, we have Dreamweavers uh, in the in the slot here. You can run Dreamweavers, but oftentimes in bigger matchups against things that are scarier, you literally just run Ironhide Gauntlets so that you can block two instead of blocking zero. Uh, blocking two is, is oftentimes better than making something non-phantasm. You will use this in this deck from time to time because we are running some big attacks, uh, but more often than not, you're running the iron side gauntlets. Speaking of uh, iron hide things, we have iron hide legs as well for the exact same reason as running the iron hide gauntlets. They can block two. You can run the phantasmal footsteps, so I have it here in the deck as well, um, but I'm not really too worried about that. I care more about the iron hide legs. And finally, we're gonna run the spring tunic because I feel like this deck is going to play a longer game in Blitz, and that's kind of a funny thing to say because long games in Blitz are still over pretty quick, but we put this on there. If you wanted to run Vestige of Soul, you can. I didn't, honestly, I'm just gonna run Spring Tunic just about every single time because I feel like uh, that one has more utility and it's just doing what I want it to do. So uh, that is the equipment. Like I said, I was just gonna blast through that because I wanna talk about the deck. Here's what I loved about playing that classic constructed game. I loved playing Prismatic Shield. This card felt so good. It feels so good. You jam it down as an instant paying three on your opponent's turn and you make three spectral shield tokens. It felt so good that I oftentimes was asking myself, if I'm running these, why can't I run the yellows that make two spectral shield tokens? And if I'm running those, I might as well run the blues so that I can pitch them 
to pay for the others or just you know make a spectral shield token at an opportune time to win the game uh, so i have those in there and then i wanted to try this card as well alongside of it glisten's a cool card in that it can add tokens or counters to your auras so that you can attack with those auras for more than one. So for example, Glisten here at cost two, it says distribute up to four one plus one attack counters uh, among any number of weapons you control. And uh, at the beginning of your end phase, remove all plus one counters from weapons you control unless the permanent doesn't become a weapon during your end phase. And if that's the case, those spectral shield tokens or auras will actually keep that plus one, which is really, really powerful. And so we're going to run two, four, six of them. We're running all colors, all of them. We're running the reds, the yellows and the blues. Now, this is dangerous in some respects because we are sacrificing 12 cards worth of blocks. But what that's encouraging us to do is play these on our opponent's turns to just use our Spectral Shield tokens to soak some damage in that way. Um, whether or not that's actually going to work is uh, a point of testing, and that's why uh, I'm showing you this deck in this current iteration and why I'm probably going to iterate on this deck on my own channel as I play it more and try it out more. But in addition to these cards, we are doing some interesting stuff with these Spectral Shield tokens. And uh, that's where we come to Merciful Retribution. Merciful Retribution cost four. It is also a light illusionist aura. It also cannot block for anything, but what it does is it turns your spectral shield tokens into damage on your opponent's turn. It says whenever an aura or an attack action card you control is destroyed, deal one arcane damage to target hero, which is super gross because if your spectral shield tokens are destroyed from your opponent attacking and you just not blocking all of their damage, the spectral shield tokens will take that damage and then Merciful Retribution will deal the damage, or I guess I should say Merciful Retribution will deal damage based on those spectral shield tokens exploding. So it's almost like you're turning that damage back around to your opponent, which is super gross. Also do note that it has the Spectra ability, so your opponent can target this with uh, one of their weapons or one of their attacks. And if they do, they destroy uh, Merciful Retribution, but they don't get any go again triggers. They don't uh, refresh any action points unless they had more than one action point, their turn would be over. So this is a, a double edged sword, or I guess that's not the best way to say it. This is dangerous in a lot of respects for your opponent. If they leave it up, they're basically um, just saying that I'm going to take whatever damage uh, that you're going to present to me from destroying these spectral shields. And if they target it, then they're basically saying my turn is going to be over. So we run two of these. In addition to that, we run Ode to Wrath. Ode to Wrath, we run one copy of this. It says whenever a source you control deals damage to an opposing hero, they lose one health. We run one copy of this because check this out. This combo is insane. If you play Merciful Retribution and uh, you have some spectral shields up and then you play Ode to Wrath, and your opponent doesn't remove these things or you play them perhaps at instant speed, well, then your opponent popping any spectral shield will take damage from this, one per shield, and then take damage from this, one per instance of mer Merciful Retribution trigger. So it's essentially two damage per shield they destroy, which is super cool. Now, I only put one in the deck just because I felt like only putting one in the deck. Putting two seemed like a little bit of overkill. Parable of Humility is in here specifically for like matchups that are really awkward, uh, that attack a lot. Uh, putting this out there just allows you to reduce the incremental damage that your opponent is uh, throwing at you if they go wide often. So versus go wide builds, uh, this is pretty strong because it says attack action cards controlled by an opposing hero have minus one while attacking and defending. So it just uh, knocks your opponent's attacks down one. And do keep in mind, all of these become weapons on your turn thanks to Luminaris. We run one copy as well. Now, these two cards, Genesis, uh, here's the thing about Genesis, here's the rub. I like the idea of them, but I feel as though this might be almost a win more card. I put two of them in the deck because I wanna test this out, uh, but the, the fact that Genesis does this powerful thing that says at the start of your turn, you can put a card into your soul. If it's a light card, uh, or sorry, if it's an illusionist card, you make a spectral shield, which is good. That's what we want to do. And if it's a light card, you draw a card to replace the one you put into it. So in this sense, 
you can generate spectral shield tokens in a just a new different way putting a card from your hand down there and uh it's very very dangerous for your opponent to leave this up for that reason i do like the idea of it so i have two of them and i want to test to see if these are good or if these are just win more uh, it is very scary to look at all these and know that these don't block but uh, i think that's where parts of the uh, other part of the deck come into play so Arclight Sentinel is uh, the last card and we have two of them in here and this is an absolute backbreaker for specific classes. Classes that can't generate extra action points and uh, don't want you to affect them at instant speed after they play a non-attack action card to make something strong or crazy. This is a backbreaker of a card for them. It is super expensive though, it costs six. So uh, you'd have to pitch like blue and blue just to play this on your opponent's turn you'd have to pitch like yellow, blue, and use the tunic uh, in order to do that if you didn't have two blues. So it can be very, very expensive, but in a deck that's not really trying to swing back on your own turn with like, um, you know, lots of other attacks that are resource intensive, uh, this makes some sense because if you can like, I don't know, pitch a yellow card with the last card in your hand, take something out of your soul that might be there and, uh, you know, like, attack with all your spectral shields, then you're pretty happy in that sense. So I put two of these in there and uh, those are also a tester for me. Both those and the Genesis may drop to one and we'll see as I play the deck and go forward. Okay, there are some traditional big attacks in here and I think this is, uh, this is part of the deck that I really enjoy as well. And it's also part of the deck that I think allows this to just be able to kind of stabilize if there are problems with blocking. Because if you just rest control of the tempo with things like Herald of Triumph, then uh, you can do more uh, Prismatic Shield shenanigans. So Herald of Triumph here attacks for seven. This card's broken, not broken. I shouldn't say that. This card's really, really good. This is my favorite. I think this is straight up just my favorite um, Light Illusionist attack out of all of them. Herald of Triumph so good. It attacks huge. Um, it costs the same as all the other ones, two, minus the ones that cost one. It's cost two, and it does, <laughs> it does perhaps the most beneficial thing in that it says attack action cards have minus one while defending this. So if your opponent thinks I'm gonna pop the Phantasm with this six attack, well you say, no you're not, Herald of Triumph. And that six attack becomes a five attack and they can no longer pop it. So then they're threatened with uh, a seven attack, a seven attack, a six attack, a six attack, and even a five attack and a five attack. That is like the strongest. You should almost always include this in all colors into a prism deck so far, in my opinion. That's that's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to stand by it. Herald of Protection is also in here because it creates a spectral shield token on hit. So if you can get Herald of Protection to hit, you get a spectral shield token. And again, if you pitch a yellow to play these, then you give this go again because Luminaris gives these go again, which is super good. And then finally, uh, for attacks, we're playing Herald of Erudition because this card is super good. If this hits, then you just get some really, really amazing effects out of it. It goes to your soul and you just get uh, two cards. You just straight up get two cards. And don't forget, if you pitch yellow for this, it has go again. Oh, also, by the way, it's dominate. It's attacking for five, so it's a little underpowered in that sense, but the fact that you have Dominate on this and you draw two cards with an on-hit effect is super, super good. And uh, to make that even better, we're running two copies of Phantasmify. So it uh, costs one to play this. It defends for two. Uh, it says the next attack action card you play this turn is an Illusionist attack action in addition to its other class types and it gains plus four and Phantasm. Uh, these all already had Phantasm, so playing Phantasmify doesn't matter on these uh, in the sense that it gives them Phantasm. What it does do is it makes this Herald of Erudition nine, a nine attack, which is super gross. And we'll run two of these uh, because that's just super cool. All right, as far as defending, we have a couple of cards here that we want to defend with. Some of, my car some of these cards I really, really like. Like for example, Soul Shield is a great card to defend with. If I could play a rainbow of soul shields, I would play a rainbow of soul shields. Soul shield is a majestic though, so it only comes in yellow. Um, it costs two to play this defense reaction, defends for six, and then it says put it in the uh, hero's soul after the combat chain closes, which is absolutely fantastic because on your turn, you can pitch yellow, pull this out. Let's say a yellow card was the last card in hand, pull this out, 
um, put banish it and make a spectral shield. And now all of your spectral shields have go again because there's a yellow in the pitch. This card is literally so good. So good. So we run two. And then we run two blue unmovables as well. And uh, I almost swapped these for like springboard somersaults because springboard somersault is yellow. But I figured I'd include some more blues and uh, a blue defense reaction that cost a lot but blocks five. Seems like it could uh, be flexible in certain specific matchups that look to go tall. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is the deck. The one thing that scares me most about this is the fact that we don't block for a lot. Uh, traditionally, I should say. The fact that we don't block for a lot is scary because look, all of these cards, all of these cards have zero blocks because they're all instants. And that is, that's a little freaky. But what I'm thinking with this deck is that rather than the traditional blocking scenario, we make spectral shields, we use some of them to um, block damage, and then we use others to swing back for basically free on our, our turn when it, when it comes to us and use things like Glisten to make them slightly more powerful uh, in that sense. And then we can use these auras as well to uh, do tricky, threatening things. So that's where I am with this deck thus far. I think there's a couple of things that I'm gonna try after I play it a few times. I'm gonna try kind of switching around things like Arclight Sentinel, things like Genesis, maybe take uh, both of those out and do one ofs instead of two ofs, swapping out maybe a couple of these auras. I'm always gonna keep these mer Merciful Retributions uh, because I feel like that is just the nuts when it comes to uh, playing that plus Prismatic Shield. But that's my first iteration of this aura deck using cards like Prismatic Shield and Glisten. Let me know what you think about this in a comment below. What changes would you make to this? How would you improve like defending, for example, with this? What would you do to allow you to pitch yellow on your turn um, so that you can more easily set up attacking with Go Again with all of these uh, really cool effects and really cool spectral shield tokens. I'd love to see your opinion on this. If you want to watch me play this, I'm going to play this iteration of the deck in a few days, and I'm going to put the uh, video up on my own personal channel. So check that out at youtube.com slash And uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe here on Channel Fireball for more flesh and blood content, perhaps centered around the fantastic new Illusionist class Prism. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.